Welcome to Fantastic Physics. Here's your question for the day. Imagine your friend is driving a truck and they're going at a constant velocity of 15 miles per hour in the forward direction. So they're not accelerating, they're not speeding up, they're not slowing down, they're just maintaining that constant speed. And then you stand in the back of the truck in the bed and you take a heavy bowling ball, something that's say 10 pounds or so, and you pull your arms out nice and straight and you throw that ball straight up as vertically upward as possible, like you see in this diagram. My question for you is, which of the following will happen? Where will this bowling ball land? Is it A, somewhere behind the truck, B, somewhere in front of the truck, or C, will the ball land back in your hands? And to answer this question, we're going to use this scale model that's going to represent the truck. And really what it is, is it's a car that has a cannon and it is a spring loaded mechanism. So I'll push this cannon down to load it, to, to compress the spring. And then I'm going to take a small ball or marble. It's a steel marble. It's very, very tiny. And I'm going to drop that in the cannon. And so this is going to represent our uh, bowling ball and our uh, person. So instead of someone throwing it up, it's going to be a cannon shooting it straight up. And I'm going to take this car, I'll push it forward, and it will be moving at a relatively constant speed. And at some point, while it's driving in this direction, I will push this button on the remote, and it's going to shoot this marble straight up. And so my question again is, which one of these should happen? And we're going to use this to prove what the answer actually is. Here we go on three, two, one. Wow. Did you see that? Okay, so it looked like the answer to our question was actually C, that if we ran this experiment, we would expect the bowling ball to land right back in our hands. Now, we used a scale model to prove this, and you could argue that this isn't really proof, that, you know, this is not a full-size car, that this is not a person throwing a ball, it's actually just a cannon shooting a ball. Uh, there's a lot of other things that are different, like, for example, this car was traveling significantly slower than 15 miles per hour. Um, the size is much, much smaller. Uh, it's not a full-size bowling ball, it's a little bit more uh, a small marble. So, in reality, this is just a scale model that's used to represent the situation. And in science, a scale model and a small-scale experiment could would provide evidence that this would be true, but it isn't necessarily proof. So how could we actually prove this is correct? Well, you'd have to increase the size of the models, try to get more and more realistic. And ultimately, to prove this, you would have to actually run this exact experiment. Now, you could go on the internet and find plenty of videos of people doing this, and you'll find that it does, in fact, land back in your hand. Um, but one other thing you can do is, um, I actually build these little carts that people sit on, and I give them like a medicine ball, so a heavier ball, and I give them a push on the cart, and they throw it up, and they'll find that it does exactly land right back in their hands. Um, another thing you could do at home very easily is just go for a little jog. So try to maintain a constant speed, take your ball, throw it straight up, and it will land back in your hands. So it's a very, very easy thing to gather evidence for, but most of us don't bother doing these simple experiments at home. And we just assume that the answer would be A because that's what our brains tell us. So what's the physics behind this? Why does the ball have to land back in your hands? Well, the idea is this. When you first started uh, with the ball, it was moving in the forward direction with you and with the truck. So everything had a forward speed of 15 miles per hour in this scenario. And if the ball already has a forward speed of 15 miles per hour, when you throw it up and it leaves your hand, that doesn't mean the ball no longer has that forward speed. So it will continue having that same forward speed just like the car does. And because their forward speeds are the same, we expect them to land in the same spot in the forward direction. And so what this shows is a principle called independence of vertical and horizontal motion. That even though you're giving the ball a vertical component of motion, that does not change the fact that it has a horizontal motion uh, due to its 15 mile per hour speed before you threw it. So that's the physics behind the ball experiment. Um, I hope you learned something interesting. Thank you for watching Fantastic Physics. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more interesting physics content. Goodbye for now, and remember, it's a fantastic universe out there, so stay curious.